Hi, Jelena. Hey, how's it going? Oh, shoot. Am I muted? No, you're good. Can you hear me? Oh, no, I you're good. Problem. How are you? Can you hear me? Yes. I'm good. How are you? Okay. Good. I am in our Maple Grove office today. Huh. Hi. Very nice. Hi. <laughs> Yeah, so I know a few other people told me they were going to join, so we'll give it a few minutes. Oh, shoot. What did I just do? Hi. Hey. So good to see your face. Oh, Maureen's here. Nice. Is this uh, similar to what we did a few months ago, or is this different? Did we do this class a few months ago? I can't keep track. I don't know if we did or not. I thought we did, but then maybe it was just something we kind of covered. Or I'm not sure. I'm not it sure. might be. I honestly, I couldn't even tell you what I taught more than two weeks ago. Okay. <laughs> I, so if at any point, if you're like, oh yeah, this is kind of repetitive, and I'm not expecting this to be very long because I just want to make sure, um, like something that I. I feel like I'm being annoying sometimes when I'm like constantly like talking about the same thing over and over, but then I have to remember that like not everybody was able to attend something or maybe right. someone missed it or if you have new people. So I think it's good to like retouch on some of these subjects and just make sure everybody feels comfortable with it. Also, oh, I swear I'm not this pale. It's the lighting. It's fluorescent. It's horrible. <laughs> no. you are not, so you don't have to worry about what you look like on a Zoom conference. Wait till you look forty. Beautiful. Oh my god. Oh that my god. The sky, the sky behind you looks like a filter. Like it looks oh, yeah. <laughs> like unreal. Yeah. No, also, that one day you were training me and my teenage son came downstairs. He goes, Who was that young girl who was teaching you a class? I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Also, Marie, and I don't think you saw her yet. Time is here. Hi. Hello. How are you? Good. <laughs> Yep, we're just do getting some stuff done today. I actually put on, I put in earrings today. Very nice. I, I mean, it's day three hair, so that got put back, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, if anybody else wants to join, they're obviously more than uh, welcome to, um, but I'm gonna get started. Um, I just literally just posted in the group. I don't expect this to take a very long time. I just want to make sure you guys are comfortable with the functionality. You know what you have um, as options to you. And then I'm just giving you some ideas of how you can utilize them. Sound good? Yes. Cool. And I think it is already recording. So that's, oh, shoot. Wendy's not here to give me, oh, yeah, she did already. Oh, you go, Wendy. Okay, let's see. I think this is what we want. Okay, so do you see like my Zoom screen or like the blank Zoom screen yep. right now? Okay, yep. perfect. So um, just to get like a base knowledge of where you guys are at, have you guys used the landing page functionality at all? Are you like brand new to it? Have you played around with it? Where like, what are you kind of feeling about it? I played around with it when it first came out and uh, I haven't done much with it since. Fair. I've done the um, uh, the contacts, you know, in command, and I've done some designs, but um, and I think I have my bio and all that in there, but I I don't understand the app or the website. Okay, okay. 
So, and maybe you and I should schedule another one-on-one -on -one, cause then we can go through some of that a little bit more in depth. Okay. Um, but so today with landing pages and, and Jelena, since you've probably, you've seen this, like you saw them when they first came out, command has this knack to like change the functionality of things or like change how you find them. So you used to build landing pages in designs. You no longer do that. All individual landing pages are actually created in the consumer tab. However, if you want to go back and edit a specific page, you do have to do that in designs. So that's the difference there. If you want to create one, it happens in the consumer tab. If you want to edit one, it happens in the designs tab. And when we're talking about landing pages, we are talking about site pages, different pages on your website, right? No. Oh, okay. This okay. is different. Okay. Okay, so now I understand your question because yes, we did. I did teach a class on um, the website specifically, but not only do you get a whole like agent site built out through command, but you can also build individual landing pages, um, which is something especially because um, I know like social media is not only like uh, obviously it's a big deal, but it's also a struggle for a lot of people in terms of like coming up with content or, mm -hmm. um, you know, finding new ways to post instead of kind of doing the same old thing. Um, so landing pages, it's not actually attached to your website. So I'm going to show you what I'm talking about here. Um, if I go to this consumer tab, you have three tabs up at the top. You have landing pages, mm -hmm. agent site pages, and guide builder. So what we're focusing on today is landing pages specifically. So it's not actually a page on your website. It's specifically, it's essentially its own site. So you could use this um, as a standalone page in um, an email you send to somebody or in a Facebook advertisement or just as a social post, but it's not actually attached to your website. Um, and there's a couple different reasons. So I know some people might be like, well, why wouldn't I just lead them to my website. It's because there are certain things you can do in the landing pages that you can't do on your agent site. So, so when I, if you were oh, doing a Facebook ad for a specific listing, then you would potentially create a landing page for it to be guided to, not necessarily your website if you were feeding them information. You could. And at that point, um, because I like that as an example, at that point, it depends kind of on um, one of two things, because you can also find the listing on your agent sure. site and have sure. them led to that. So at that point, it's like, do you want them exploring more outside of that individual listing? Um, or do you want them kind of like, this is what you're interested in. I want to make sure like you, you know exactly where to contact me, et cetera. So you could yeah. always do like an AB test and try both and just oh. see maybe what gets more interaction. But um, the nice thing about it is it is, in my opinion, pretty easy to create a landing page. So I, I have to move our little faces. Um, so when you want to create a new one, um, I guess what I should actually preface by saying, and you guys should probably be good to go here, but for anybody maybe watching later, um, before you even dive into landing pages, you want to make sure your marketing profile, um, is completely filled out because there are certain widgets um, not only within your agent site, but within landing pages that pull from that marketing profile. So as long as that is as updated as possible, it's just going to save you time and energy later when you are building these landing pages. So with that being said, I'll show you how to create one. So similar to agent site pages, all you do is um, start by clicking this create a new site button. And then here's the difference. So if you were adding to your website, you would do this option. If you're doing a standalone page, standalone page option. And then it takes you into an editor if you've done your agent site, which I think both of you have maybe or looked at. Um, it takes you into a very similar editor, um, site builder, what have you. So right away we're seeing a couple different content block options. Similar to your website again, these are buildable. You can technically use as many widgets as you want in one landing page. So to give you an idea of why you do that. So I always recommend maybe starting with a branded header at the very top of your page. All you have to do, drag it, drop it. Um, at that point, I'm going to see that right there. It's going to be at the very top of my page. I will be able to go back in and edit aspects of it if I want to later. Um, from there, you can add more. So let's 
for this situation, uh, do a listing one. So I can show you what that looks like. So you drag and drop your listing. And you'll notice right away, this is not your listing. This is some random listing in Texas. So that comes later. Um, you don't actually do the editing just yet. Um, after that, maybe at the very bottom, because you can scroll through here, um, at the very bottom, you, and I always recommend like branded header on the top and then um, a lead form at the bottom. You just want to make sure anybody can contact you as easily as possible. So then you would drag this. And what you want to make sure you do is drag it towards the bottom of the page because if you drag it above, it's going to put it above the listing. So now that I have that added, I can scroll down. Now I have a contact form. So let's say this is how, what the content pieces you want on here. Something else to note, like if you accidentally add something or if you want to move it, if you click on one of the widgets, I can delete it, I can duplicate it, I can grab it, or I can move it up. So if, don't worry too much. Like if you accidentally put things in the wrong order, it is possible to either delete them, move them, what have you. But once you have the actual widgets on there that you're interested in, then you click this configure widgets button. So once I go there, it's going to show me right now I'm in the third widget. So I'm actually going to go back to the first one. Um, so now I'm in this first widget. I can enter a new header if I want. So if we're doing a listing, I'm probably going to do the address. So one, two, three, Main Street, or like you could make it cutesy, like welcome to one, two, three Main Street, something like that. You're not going to see it update as you do it. So keep that in mind. It's not broken. You're not going to see it update until you click save and apply. Um, so just know it is working. It just takes a little bit. The rest of this information pulling straight from the marketing profile. So um, whatever you have your headshot as, however you have your name listed in there, something that kind of bugs me is like the phone number situation is it doesn't like automatically add the lines to it. So I'm just going to manually do that. Um, team logo, if you have a team logo, that'll show up next to the KW here. Um, once again, pulling from marketing profile. So before saving and applying, I'm actually going to go up here. Do you guys see where it says like branded header right here? Mm -hmm. Um, so then I'm just going to move on to the next widget. Um, and this is where you're going to browse listings. I will be honest, sometimes I run into issues when browsing listings. Um, and it's just because like the search function, like if you type in a city, it doesn't pull up like all the listings in that city. It goes mostly by street address. So the best thing you can do is just have the exact street address typed in there. Um, just for a quick... Um, Purposes. I am just going to type in Minnetonka. Hopefully it loads. I have no patience for the internet. Uh-oh. Oh no. The page is freezing. Shoot. Okay, hold on, you guys. I've seen this happen when I try to do this via Zoom. Oh, no. Okay, sorry about that, you guys. I Like I said, I don't know if you even heard anything I was saying. I've noticed sometimes it gets super, super slow when I'm trying to Zoom and also do command. So apparently they're both very, like, high, high bandwidth situations. Um, so let me pop back into there. Um, okay, so what we were doing before, branded header, listing, and Okay, so hopefully this works now. Lead form didn't add. That's annoying. Okay, so I'm just going to pick this first listing so that we don't like mess around with it. Um, it should work if we're if you're not doing it on a Zoom call. It's just like too much going on at once. Um, but from there, it's pulling the information automatically from that listing. You can go back in, you can change it, you can upload a new image if you want to do a different like main header image. So once I click save and apply, that's when I can actually see these updates happen. So um, I forgot to do my header here, so I can actually just go back to my branded header widget. 
save and apply again. So you can do this as many times as you need to. So now I can see this listing here. So this one, it's sold, so it's a little bit different. Usually like photos are taken down from the MLS sometimes. Um, so normally you would see a whole slideshow of images, but just based on the listing I chose, this is what happened. But it is good to know that you can do it. Um, you'll see the update here, so you could use this as a sold website if you want. Um, personally, I think if you're gonna do a just sold website, I would use the list reports ones just because it has like the fun confetti and like they're super, super cute. So um, if you haven't seen those, let me know and I can send you an example. Um, but so you see the details here. You can go based on a map. Um, so it's worth just like scrolling through here, seeing if you like it. Um, obviously you guys just heard me mention list reports. So list reports is another option if you want a landing page specifically for a listing. Um, so at that point, it's totally just like your preference in terms of looks, functionality, what have you. Um, so just make sure you take a look at both of those and decide which one you like better. Something to note though, with these landing pages and somebody, um, an agent actually is the one that pointed this out to me. It's pulling exactly from the MLS. So if something is like, is, if something is wrong from the MLS or so, for example, like you only see pulling exactly what it finds, um, you can't edit the specific details. So like say um, the beds and baths was accidentally switched, you wouldn't actually be able to edit that from this site. So that is an absolute kind of like crappy caveat. Um, if you do run into an issue, obviously I don't see that happen super often because most of the time the MLS is totally fine, but um, just keep that in mind and please just like double check it before you're like posting it everywhere. Um, so like I said, just compare it to list reports, figure out which one of those works better for you. But to Jelena's point, um, you could absolutely use this if you love the way it looks, it's showing all the details you want. Um, in a Facebook ad. If you do want it as more of a standalone page, um, easier probably for people to contact you through it, what have you. Any questions on the listing landing page specifically? Okay, so I want to start with that one um, just because it's, it's one of those things that you do have other options out there, but there are some unique landing pages in here. So I'm just gonna leave this, create a new site, standalone page, create page. One of the things I will say that I love about this is the fact that you can build it out with so many different features. Um, so you could, you can add the header, the lead form, the listing, what have you. One of the things that I think is pretty cool um, is the market snap feature. So similar to that um, market update email that you can put like the smart plan that you can add people to, you can create specific landing pages for specific neighborhoods. So the reason I think that's kind of cool, and here's where social media comes into play. So if you have maybe a surrounding area that you work a lot in is your farm area, um, taking this and using it maybe as like a weekly neighborhood highlight. So every week you highlight a different neighborhood in a specific area. Maureen, you're kind of already doing that like in some of your social media, like you highlighted Watertown. So why not add another post to go along with it, highlighting some of the neighborhood with a map, other details. So if I scroll through here, you can see like housing stats. Um, so it's pretty simple, but it's just giving people a basic overview of like what's going on in that specific market. Really great to click on. And then at that point too, you add that lead form to the bottom. So if people do want to contact you about it afterwards, they can do that directly through this landing page. So um, if I configure widgets here, um, you can now type, they used to not have the zip code as a searchable option, they do now, so that's nice. Um, so this is my neighborhood. Um, where are we? Okay, so do within a specific, out, what? Out, do you send this out through your command contacts or is it that only if people go to the landing page they can see it? So you have options there. You can either set people up on a smart plan where this sends it to them automatically based on their specific neighborhood, or you can create the individual landing page um, and use it as like a social media post or if you're highlighting a specific area. Um, so then it's a little bit more generic. It's not personalized to like one specific person. Um, so let's see, we're just gonna copy them. South Hopkins neighborhood trends. Okay, so I'm gonna save and apply this. Um, with this, because I played devil's advocate, um, why is this not saving? Come on. Okay, 
So what you pro you just, and this is the thing, I always just say double check the info because you want to make sure that it's reflecting the message that you're trying to present. So for example, with my neighborhood, the average listing price is listed at 281,921, but the average sold price is 232,450. So if that kind of goes against like a message you're trying to send, just keep that in mind. Or, um, and I do see that pretty frequently of like higher listing price to lower average sold price. Um, I'm not being a realtor. I can't say specifically why that's happening. You might have more insight on it, but just make sure that um, like you have an understanding of the information on there before you post it, just in case you do get questions on it later. Um, but it's just nice that you have this as an option for your social media. Questions on the neighborhood snap? Cool. So I'm gonna go back again. I don't wanna save these because I have so many already. Um, the next couple options I wanna show you, and I'm just gonna build like a wild one here that I would not actually like recommend doing. So you have another um, agent branding tab um, so this one's a little bit bigger, so you could use this as your header as well, um, and it just has a little bit more information. Um, this would actually work well as a header or a footer, um, just easy for people to see your contact info, headshot, logo, what have you. Um, legal footer, compliance-wise, maybe it's good to have that. Um, it's basically a place for you to say each office is independently owned and operated. Um, but typically speaking, as long as you are like one click away from something where it does say that, um, you technically should be good to go. Um, your local expert. This one is newer, if I'm not mistaken, um, which this basically combines um, the agent branding with the legal footer, which is kind of weird. I don't know why they made this its own thing, but it's basically, um, co actually it's combining that plus the download my app. So this one's kind of nice if you want like an all encompassing, here's my contact info, here's a link to download my app, here's my legal footer, what have you. So honestly, I kind of really like this, your local expert option. I think it looks really nice. Um, it also can add a bio there. So it's really an all encompassing uh, widget there if you wanna add a bunch of information. So I'm actually gonna delete this one. Um, you can also, um, and, and just to get rid of that, you can also do a testimonial capture form. However, I, I don't, this is a newer one in here too you have this option for your agent site. And this is one where I recommend don't do like a, a single landing page on this. This is one where I would say definitely include it on your agent site because that's where those testimonials are going to show up. So I'm not really sure why they added that as an individual landing page, but if you see this, just make sure you're doing that on your agent site and not as a standalone page, if that makes sense. Um, but another one you can do is a download my app. So if you want to create your own download my app landing page, I actually really, really recommend this um, just because something I was actually meeting with an agent yesterday. And something we noticed is that when you take somebody to um, like the generic like KW app link, um, it takes them to like the overall KW website where there's in the top right, like a sign up or a login. So it might be a little confusing for people because if they sign up there, it's not, it doesn't get added as your lead, which is kind of annoying. It goes, I don't know where it goes, but it's just the generic Keller Williams site, okay. which is odd. So I would definitely recommend, and this is another one where you can add this um, to your agent site. So it might just be best to add it directly to your agent site, making sure there is no way they could sign up for, or like sign up for something and not be directed back to you. I just want to make sure all your leads are going directly to you. Um, one other thing, oops, so I go back to here, um, video used to be an option. Oh, it, it's back now. Okay, cool. So you can also do videos. If I configure my widget here, why is that? That's not correct. Oh gosh. This is the one that I run into issues with. And to, I know Jelena, to your point, like you mentioned, like you run into an issue and then you're like, eh, I don't really want to deal with this right now. So, um, the video one is apparently not functioning properly. Ah. 
See, yeah. that's what happens to me every time I get on one of these and then I, it, I can't figure something out. I just throw my hands up and I close the laptop and I'm like, I'm done. I'm not doing this. Which <laughs> I don't blame you because it is frustrating. Um, but one thing, like I do see them make those updates quite a bit. So it is worth checking back in and seeing if they've done that. Um, like, like I think with the video one last time I was in here, it was functioning. And so I think that might just be something that they're working on to make updates to, to make sure it's fully functioning. Um, I, you know what? I was like, I bet you I'm going to teach this and something is not going to work today because I'm teaching a class. I feel like that's always how it happens. Um, otherwise, if you want a little bit more control, you can also add um, a little bit less detailed content blocks. So they're not widgets, but you can add, um, similar to like how you build a MailChimp email, um, you can add like a text box, add your own text. You can add um, a link block to add a link to something. You can add a button. So it does offer you a few other options to really like jazz it up based on how you want. Um, but when it comes to landing pages, I think the widgets are the most helpful. And I think the widgets that you might use the most often um, are going to be a market snap, a local expert, um, absolutely adding a lead form, maybe for a listing if you like the way those single property sites look. Um, so those are just a few scenarios where you might use this instead of an agent site. So does it make sense like when you would maybe use one versus another? Yes. Okay. I think for the most part, um, your age, like your agent website um, is where you're going to be doing the most, I guess, like personalization to. But it is nice to know that if you just want something quick to post on social media, you can add, you can create a market snap one, you can create a listing website, etc. And this is one that I do consistently like check back in with just to see if they've made more updates to it. I almost want to say I feel like the last time I looked at this, not counting today, um, there were actually a few more. So I'm wondering if this is now something that they're spending a little bit more time on and making sure the widgets are working for it because I, I vaguely remember a few more options in here. If you were going to post a market snap on Facebook, mm -hmm. uh, the landing page is the only way to get a link for that, correct? So if you want like a clickable link, Yes. As of right now, I have not seen that as like a widget option for your agent site. However, if you want something, um, a, a different idea that you could do there uh, is in designs, they do have like graph, like market snap graphics where you can essentially pull the same information and put it into a social media graphic. Um, so you do actually have other options there, but if you want to take them to something that does maybe have a contact form um, you can you can pretty much do it either way. The InDesigns for mm -hmm. the um, market snapshots there, how do you actually, and maybe you and I can talk about this, but how do you actually get the information to generate? I got you. I can show you that. Um, so if you're in designs, and while we're in designs too, as I mentioned, um, if you want to actually go back and edit any of your live landing pages, this is where you go to do it. So just throwing that out there. Um, but so what you would want for that, Jelena, is you would want to go to the social section. Yep. And I'm going to move faces again. Does anybody else just have no patience for the internet? Like, I, I feel like if it takes longer than two seconds to load, I'm like, come on. Uh, once a uh, distance learning comes back or if my husband gets put back at home. It's really a problem. Oh gosh. It's really slow. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I can't even imagine for you guys having that many computers going. Um, so for you, Jelena, um, I want to say, let's see. It is under neighbor. Okay. So it's under the buyer section and then neighborhood snap. They have a bunch of different templates. Um, all these are fully editable. So like imagery wise, so I would say go for the one that you like the font combination most. Um, so we're just going to look at this one. You can also use these in flyers. You can use them in listing packets. So you can use these neighborhood snap features pretty much anywhere. Um, so obviously the 
I guess the caveat with this one in comparison to if you're doing it on a landing page, um, the social media graphics is going to take a little bit more manual effort. So it's not just going to automatically change this. So like I would have to change house hunting in Barton Hills to say um, house hunting in South Hopkins. Um, then you have to make sure your logo is updated. So the one like and I'm hoping this is something they update uh, moving forward, and I'm sure I'm not the only one that's like brought it up to them, but designs is like the one thing that they do not automatically auto-populate from your marketing profile. So keep that in mind, like you, you want to make sure you um, update like the KW, this, the KW DBA name, that's obviously not our logo. So you'll want to go in, um, they've also, if you haven't been in designs in a while, so this is probably good that I'm touching on this, you can no longer upload your logos from the logos tab, which is weird. Um, you actually have to go to images, click add, and then upload them manually. Yeah, that confused me last time I used it. I was like, Why okay, I so you ran into that. Yeah. yeah. Frustrating. Yeah. And I have no idea why they did that, but that's why it's like you come across these weird little quirky things that all of a sudden you're like, oh, that's different. Yeah. Um, so I actually have a logo already uploaded, so I'm just gonna grab it. It's not swapping out automatically. That's annoying. Um, if you click on an image though, so like this logo, for example, I clicked on it. I can then go to this one. Is it not gonna let me? Jeez Louise, okay. See, this is what happens. <laughs> so see, you're not alone. Okay, so I'm, I'm just overcomplicating it now, but um, I am going to just straight up, come on. Come on, logo. <laughs> My computer is being very slow. Okay, so I'm just gonna delete it. I'm gonna pop this guy in. I mostly just want to do it the lazy way where it swaps out automatically. <laughs> um, so now that's in there, it's compliant, what have you. So the market snap itself, when you click on it, a KWLS, KWLS, oh my gosh, I butchered that. Um, a KWLS button pops up um, and then you can either search for a listing or which if you search for a listing, basically what happens there is it's going to pull up the listing photos, things like that. So it's just kind of an easy way to access that. Um, otherwise with snapshots, um, that's what you want to be in to be able to find this information. So this one, you can either search by uh, neighborhood name or postal code. So what you do, you click on it and then it's going to give you three essentially layout options. So this long skinny one, um, just an imagery version or like a shorter squatter version. So this, if I go through here, swaps right out. So that part's pretty easy. But once again, and I've noticed this with the neighborhood snaps, be very, very aware of how the listing price and the sold price are reflected. And something else that I just noticed, I don't know if you guys paid attention to the numbers before, which this is like news to me, this information is different than the, uh, the landing page information. Huh. So, because I just noticed the listing price and the sold price are different. So that is an unfortunate... Uh, so something's not updated. Yeah, something. I, and I did, the problem is I guess I don't know which one it is. Okay. So maybe, <laughs> maybe it's better to go into InfoSparks and find your information there for right now. Or if you want to take the time to talk to customer service and be like hey which one's correct there's that but i have never seen that before is where this they information editable up. at all or no it's not nope. okay so that's where i would say um some of the other social media graphic designs are going to be a little bit better of an option because they're more like customizable um where it's not necessarily this little like chart but um like here's where you update this here's where you update this etc so now I'm not so sure about these neighborhood snap ones. So apologies for talking about it so long. Um, but I have not seen that happen yet. So that's news to me. Well, and is it updated like based on each month? Because I know that the trend is right now that the houses are selling for asking price or above. Right. And you know, it's showing a lot less, so. Yeah. So I would almost say when it comes to these graphics, maybe go the more 
simple route and just specify that kind of information because I think this is not reflecting what I personally and I'm not even Asian but that's not reflecting what I would want to talk about so that is a lesson in something maybe we shouldn't be doing is using these little graphics so that kind of goes the opposite of what I wanted to accomplish here but um any while we're in designs and because we have time do you guys have questions about other aspects of designs or about the agent sites like the actual like agent websites I think where I've gotten frustrated is just when you wanted to add a text, um, mm -hmm. the boxes that come up and the trying to place it where you want it. And then I've, I've had it where like the letter shows up huge and then you try to delete it and then you're trying, you're just trying to go in and type something and it just doesn't yes. seem very user friendly. So I will, I will say there is a learning curve there and kind of, I guess the rule of thumb or the trick that I've come across when it comes to this is anything to do with the text box rule of thumb if you click on it once that's what you can do to move it around so say i want to move this text like up a little bit or i want to move it to the side or i just like i just don't like where it's sitting i could do that mm -hmm. if i double click into the text box that's how you can edit the text itself so now i can go in here and i can change this and say pretty much anything else I want, or I can highlight it. I can change the font. I can change the size of the font. Um, to your next point, say you accidentally like make it too big. So at that point, you want it in its like one click version and you're gonna alter it that way. So it's just, it's, it's temperamental is what I'll say when it comes to using any sort of text in command. Um, but I will say the biggest like help has been figuring out one click, move to double click, retype. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Were you running into other issues with the text as well? No, I think that was the biggest. Thing. Okay. Okay. And you are not alone with that issue because that's probably anytime I talk to somebody about designs, the number one thing they say is the text boxes are a nightmare. So if you, if you kind of follow those like two little guidelines, you should be good to go there. And then also the photo thing, I just want to highlight that again, just because it is something that's been updated, um, is when you're doing any sort of photo, I don't know why it's not showing it. So here's a weird thing that I'm running into. It's not showing me the photo option. There we so go. So I had that the last time I was in. What did you just press? I clicked around, but I clicked on an okay. image. So what I've noticed, okay. and when it comes to like, if it's a listing or something like that, like this, sometimes the KWLS button doesn't show up until you click on it, um, which is super annoying in my opinion, but just a weird quirk I've run into. So if you want to add an image, make sure you're clicked on an image within the document. Um, and then if you want to add any images, make sure you're going to this add option instead of like the logos button, just like, because like I said, they stopped letting you add them there. Um, and similar to Canva, if you've ever used Canva, um, they do kind of save from document to document. So once I upload an image, so I uploaded this logo yesterday. And so now any document I go into will have that logo. Um, so you could do that with your headshot. You could do that with like any type of imagery you use consistently. Um, you can, it also lets you connect and pull images from Facebook, Instagram, um, or their stock photos under this company tab. So if I click on that and I click on a folder, um, I can see a bunch of different images. Um, and then because I'm clicked into this image, say I want to swap it out. Um, anytime you see this little like circle arrows, whatever, and I click on that, it just swaps it out automatically for me. You also should, with most photos, be able to drag it and drop it. Does that make sense with the photos, like where to find them? Um... So I have a question. Is, yeah. is this where, is this where um, some people are getting um, photos for like, I don't know, like interior design and things like that um, for Instagram? 
I would not be surprised. Um, and I'm wondering, like, how are people having all these design photos? Isn't that so infringement? If, if you're not careful, yes. So Maureen, I must not have ever sent you these websites. There are three websites that I use as well uh, for free photos. Um, I, J Jelena, have I sent those to you before? Mm -hmm. Okay, so Maureen, I will send you an email after this class with the links to all three of those websites because, um, and to your point, and I'm glad you're aware of that because you can't just be pulling photos from Google. Um, I've seen people do it before, but you- well, Yeah, and like, you know how like Pinterest, you can repost and stuff, like I'm yeah. having to create my own photos and I'm like, I can't keep just creating my own photos. I gotta have something else to pull. Yep, okay, yes. And the between those three sites, they sometimes they have overlapping photos. Sometimes they have um, completely completely unique ones. So I always recommend checking out all three um, to find exactly what you're looking for. Chances are you'll find something. I've never once had to pay for a photo anywhere, okay. or like like when it comes to like because you can purchase stock images. I've never had to do that. Um, anybody that maybe is listening to this class later, if you want those websites, let me know um, just out loud. They're Pexels, Pixabay, and Unsplash. But Marie and I will send those directly to you. So you. imagery wise, those are great. And then also keep in mind, um, because it's nice that Command has these options, but I also think it is important to know about alternatives. So like I said, those photo websites also, um, if you ever use Canva for design purposes as well, um, canva.com. Um, that's probably what I make 95% of my marketing materials in, uh, just because it has such like a broad range of options. And they also have their own like photo capabilities, their own uh, photo sources. So if you're ever stuck looking for a photo, check command, check Canva, check those three photo websites. And it's also kind of nice too, because Canva has a lot of templates. Uh, Canva also has a lot of templates. So if you just if you have something very specific in mind, absolutely check both and just find one that works for whatever you're trying to do. And functionality wise, they're very similar. If we use it from here or from those websites, there's no copyright infringement at all. Oh, you're good. They're free, completely free photo sites. And, and Command doesn't have this issue, but Canva does. Um, they have some photos in there that are like premium. Um, I have a completely free Canva account. I've so everybody I talk to, I'm say, I say it's not worth it to pay for an account because what you can't do in there, you can usually do in command or like something like that. Um, but they do have a lot of premium in, images in there. So if you tried to use one in your document, it has like a um, watermark on it. So it won't really work or um, it's going to prompt you to like pay for it. So just that's why I always say check the free photo websites. Chances are you're going to find something that works for what you're looking for. Okay. This is a silly question, but any uh, coming soon, just listed, just sold, those I can all press the KWLS and pull my listing in mm -hmm. with that option. Yep. Neat. Yep. Yes. So um, that's a super great option. Once again, at least giving you another option. List reports can do the same thing. So. Right. Um, just make sure you guys are aware that you have like tons and tons of resources for you. But yeah, you, the nice thing is with the KWLS, it should be pulling in the images and stuff automatically. So you don't have to like upload them in a million them. different places. Yes. Cause <laughs> yes, I, I remember before, before we use uh, list reports specifically, like I handmade every single listing flyer, open house flyer, like everything. And the amount of, like random listing photos I had saved on my computer was like insane right. and always having to upload them everywhere. So I must say it's really nice when you find <laughs> like good resources where you don't have to do that anymore. So. Right. So um, was, what Jelena was talking about is can you, you can do that with um, coming soon's or just listed in our market center, even if it's not your listing. Yes. So let me show you what that looks like. Um, so let's say listings, let's say um, it's a for sale. They have tons of uh, layouts here. Super cute. Um, and some of them are like, I like, you know, like this one, it's a little bit quirkier, um, kind of fun, not necessarily um, listing specific, but they have something where like you could use this, maybe swap out the background image for um, like a beautiful kitchen. And then your post is about like major hard eyes for this beautiful kitchen. So if you haven't, check out 
uh, command designs and like just go through the different tabs because you're going to find so many things that'll give you just like so much content that you, it'll be like blowing out your ears. So say you want to use one of these for sale graphics. Let's pop into there. And this, the, what I'm about to show you with the listings, it should work for this. It should work for Facebook ads, things like that. Cause I've seen, um, if you don't have a listing of your own, if you, um, ask another agent like, hey, do you mind if I do a Facebook ad for your listing? Chances are they're going to be okay with it because it's free advertising for them. Um, but so the search functionality is going to work very similarly to this. And something I'm noticing already is I clicked on it once. I'm going to alter that. Okay. So um, did you, I don't know if you guys noticed that when I wasn't clicked on the house information, it wasn't showing the KWLS button. So don't get frustrated. It's going to show up. You just have to weirdly click around the page. So it's just a quirk that I've noticed. So I'm going to go here. Um, do you, do either of you have like an address I can look up? You can do 790 Bayard, B-A-Y-A-R-D Avenue. So this actually is different than when you're doing an ad. Is it the St. Paul? Yep. Okay. So now I'm getting all the photos. I can also look up the details. Um, so then at that point I see the price. I can easily swap that out. Um, I can go back to photos. I can grab this, drag it over. That's a cute house, by the way. Isn't oh my it? God. Did a good job. <gasps> that porch is so cute. So then um, you update the information here, you pop in a logo. I mean, obviously I make it look easy because I've done this, I've messed around in command like enough. Um, but typically speaking, like it shouldn't take you more than five minutes to make a cute little graphic, you know? So it is nice that they have that KWLS connection and you can look up other people's listings. Like it doesn't have to be your own. So obviously like the account I'm on right now is not Jelena's account and I was able to look up that listing. So um keep that in mind absolutely that's another thing like if you're holding an open house for um you know someone's listing that's not your own typically speaking they're going to be okay with you marketing it etc so marine that's perfect for you because you're holding it open this weekend <laughs> oh so you're yeah so you're saying i should just ask if i can do a, a which ad for the listing that i'm doing an open at it's yes. worth it I, I mean, I would talk because I think it's for Andy or something to absolutely ask him because I mean, it's not, you're not going to obviously make the money from the sale. So he yeah. should be pretty, pretty psyched that, you know, that it's free advertising for him and then good connections for you. Okay. Yeah, you can do a for sale or you can do a open house or I mean, however you want to market that depending on yeah. what you're, what you're looking for. Mm hmm. And, and I mean, anything listing related, open house related is doing so well right now when it comes to just like exposure and uh, getting people reaching out to you. So it's definitely, definitely worth a shot for sure. Any other questions? So this obviously turned into more of like a broader command Q&A, which no, I'm totally fine with that because I think it's it's good to be able to answer those questions. So do you guys have any other questions that you can think of off the top of your head? No, just every time I do anything with command, it helps because I, I'm always so overwhelmed. <laughs> with totally. And, and for you guys, for anybody listening later, I am absolutely available. Um, if you guys have questions, like don't hesitate to reach out to me. Um, sometimes it might be something that I haven't run into yet, but I'm happy to look into for you, um, obviously with command. And, and sometimes it's just like a, a, a trial and error that like I figured out after messing it up like 700 times. So feel free to reach out to me, more than happy to do that. Um, and then, yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, and thank you guys for joining in today and just keep me posted on anything else you run into. If you want to do a one-on-one, -on -one, okay. whatever, whatever your thought is. I'll reach out for one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Sounds good. All right. Well, I will talk to you later, guys. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Bye.